Welcome to Tutorial Chart Properties. In this series of tutorials created to discover zero coding algorithmic trading with TS Lab. In this video, you will learn the user friendly way to create customized charts in minutes in TS Lab. We will show you how to spot any errors and how to avoid making common mistakes when building a chart on historical data. If you haven't seen our previous tutorial about setting up a data provider, we recommend doing that as incorrect data provider settings affect the display of your chart. The chart editor as well as the script editor where we create trading robots look exactly the same. Let's get familiar with the elements that are in the chart editor. As you can see, some blocks have already been added to the workspace. From these blocks, we will build our robots. This is a standard template that you will see every time you create a new chart or script. So here we can see the block tradable instrument. This is the main block that determines what instrument we use. If you click on it twice, then the window familiar to you will open with the option to choose an instrument and the option to change it. Next, we can see a block close, where you can get the closing price of the candle. You see that the output of the block is not connected to anything, which means it does not perform any function. It is just an example. If you delete it, then nothing changes on the chart. Going further, this block is a panel of the chart itself. A block instrument and a volume block are connected to it, which means that the chart displays the price of the instrument in the form of candles and the volume values in each candle. Take a look at the chart. We can see the price and at the bottom of the chart is volume in the form of a histogram. You see, both the volume and the price are on the same panel and it doesn't look good. Suppose you want to display the volume on a separate panel of the chart. How to do it? We go back to the editor and add another chart panel. It's very simple. All necessary blocks are in the toolbar. So we want to add another panel. The panel is called Service Element. So we go to the right section, find the chart pane and just drag it on the workspace. Now, just by changing the connection from the top panel to the bottom, we move the volume into a separate panel. Back to the chart, we see that the volume is now displayed on a separate panel, but the appearance has changed. If initially there was a histogram, now it's just a line. How do we get the histogram back? To do this, we go back to the editor. All the display settings for the elements are in the lower right corner of the properties window and appear there when you click on the link of the element to the panel. In this case, this is a connection between the volume block and the chart pane. We see that here in the drop-down list, chart style is line. The line is set by default. To return to the histogram, we select the appropriate item. Now everything looks OK and the volume display has returned to the previous view. Also, here we can set the color of the elements. We can specify the thickness, style and so on. In general, all external display is configured here. The same goes for the main panel where we have displayed the price chart. For example, now we have red and green candles. Let's say you want to make them some other color. To do this, click on the line connecting the instrument to the panel and choose a color and thickness. Change the style from candles to bars and so on and so forth. Now let's try to add an indicator to the chart. To do this, we go to the same section in the toolbar window. Let's take the most classic indicator, a simple moving average. Simply drag and drop it into the editor field. Connect the block with the price chart. In this case, we need the moving average to be above the price. But nothing appeared on the chart. Why? Because we did not specify how the moving average should be calculated, what data should be used. We also see the SMA block is highlighted in red, 
which means some kind of error has occurred. By the way, about the errors. You can check the messages about them in this window. You see, there is a red cross and a number 1 flashing in the low right corner. This means that there is one error and because of it, some elements do not work. In order to see what this error is, we can open the message window in this way. Here it says, element SMA contains the error, entry has not been activated. This means that we have not connected the data to build a simple moving average. That is, the input of this block needs to be connected with something. The fact is that the moving average can be built on different data. It can be the closing price, highs of candles, or you can even build an average by volume. Then it will be the average volume for the period. But in this case, we are interested in the classic SMA built on the closing price. We already have a close block here. We simply connect it to the SMA and get a simple moving average built on the closing price of candles. Let's go to the chart. Now everything is fine. The moving average is correct. Now let's recall how we create a chart. In order to create a chart, we need to go to the view menu. Chart. An empty chart opens. Then we need to select an instrument. There are several ways to do so. Either click the right mouse button, go to Properties and select here, or go to the Chart Editor, double click on the block instrument and select the ticker here. Or there is a third option. Select the block instrument and in the lower right corner again see the icon. By clicking on it, we open the instrument selection window. Select the right quotes file. Click OK. The data is loaded. Going to the chart window, we now see the chart of gold. Everything is absolutely fine. By default, as you can see, the volume is added again. Let's try to get rid of it and instead add different values to a separate pane, for example ATR, to check current volatility. To do this, we need to add a new chart panel. By the way, you can use the search function for all the blocks by typing the name of the block in the top row of the toolbar window. We take out the panel and now let's find and add the ATR indicator to the chart. By typing ATR in the search box, we find it easily and drag the block to the workspace. Connect it to the panel. Now we need to connect the indicator values to the input. In order to calculate the ATR correctly, we need all the values of a candle – open, high, low, close – unlike in the case with the SMA, where we used only closing prices. So this block needs to be connected directly to the instrument. By the way, if you hover the mouse over the input of the block, you can see a hint about what type of data you need to connect to the input. It can be numeric data, logical data, position data or instrument data. In this case, we see that the instrument must be connected to the input. Going to the chart, we can see that the volume from the chart has gone and the ATR value has now appeared. Everything is perfect. What problems can possibly happen when plotting a chart based on historical data? The most common problem relates to the date of the chart. If we go into the properties of the chart, we will see that there is a field Use Initial Date and the date is set 30 days before the current one. By default, Tesla builds a chart only for the last months. Therefore, if you have downloaded the quotes that end before this date, then when you try to plot the chart, it will not work. Instead of a chart, there will be an empty window. For example, quotes in my file only until October the 10th, 2018. Let's try to put the date from December the 10th, 2018 in the field. Click OK, go to the chart window and see. We don't see anything. How do we solve this problem? Just set the earlier date or build a chart for the entire period of the data simply by unchecking the Use Initial Date checkbox. Click OK. Go to the chart window and we can see that now everything is correct. What else do you need to know when working with charts? 
naturally how to change the time frame of the chart. We have already learned how to add various indicators, how to customize the display of chart elements, and now we need to learn how to change the time frame. The easiest way to use the presets, which you can find at the top of the chart. Now we have a one minute time frame. You can set it for five minutes. 60 minutes, that is one hour, and so on and so forth. But if you need some non standard time frame, which is not listed here, for example, a four hour time frame, then again you need to go to Properties, Chart, and here you can set the interval period and the interval itself. In our case, this is four hours or 240 minutes. OK, and that's it, we have a four hour chart. By the way, please note that if I click seconds now, we will not see the seconds candles. Instead, we will see the same one minute candles. This is because the file that we downloaded only has one minute data. From it, we can build five minute, one hour, etc. But it is impossible to build seconds from minutes, let alone tick candles. To do this, you need to look for relevant historical data. But in all fairness, one-minute quotes are more than enough to create and test effective algorithmic strategies. Moreover, second and tick quotes require large computational power and they will complicate the work rather than create advantages. OK, that's the way the chart editor works in this lab. Today we have discovered how to create and customize a chart to your liking how to add various indicators and change time frames. Now you should be able to avoid the most common mistakes and find them easily in your work. Hopefully it was useful. We would love to hear your comments. Send us your thoughts. Thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you soon.